worship you. God, we love you. And we're just simply responding to the love that you've already poured out. So we raise our voices. This time that we have together, Jesus, to worship you, God, to invite you close, to surrender ourselves, declare your greatness. Worship you, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, lift it up. Have a reason, hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies. Have a reason, hallelujah. Louder than the unbelief. Have a reason, hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. our voices to you, because you're the king, you are victorious, you're the giver of life, hope and peace, so we we'll sing a little louder, the presence of my enemies, sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief, and I sing a little louder, my weapon is a melody.
God, if death can't stop you, what can? You're a conqueror. Jesus, you're alive. We live for you, Jesus. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, gonna hear my praises.
Christ be magnified, magnified. Worship the King of Kings. There's no one like our God, worthy of all the praise, all the glory. Jesus will work on his worship. your hands to him. give it all for from you are all things to you are all things you deserve the glory the praise and honor you're worthy of it all you're worthy of it Come on, just take a quick assessment. What is it that we're holding back? What is it that's standing in the way? Jesus draws close, God.
live our life towards. We declare that something to be. Everything comes from you. Everything is moving towards you. It's for your glory. And everything is sustained by you. So we invite you into the midst of all that we do. Into this gathering, this short time that we have together. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would move. Your word would come alive. your hands and feet would be your hands and feet. We would operate in your character, in your spirit, in your power, in your love. So Jesus, all that we have, God, we just lay it at your feet. Declare our need for you. Just place you at the center, Jesus. God, we pray that your perfect will would be done in this time that we have, in this moment, Jesus, on earth as it is in heaven. Nothing would stand in the way, but that we would get a hold of all that you have in store for us. Open our eyes. Draw us close, Jesus. We honor you now. We celebrate your love for us. You guys doing well? We are continuing in our series looking at the book of uh, Philippians. And a series called Sincerely Paul, Letters of Paul, Letters from Paul. And uh, we've, we've come into this series a couple different times throughout the uh, last several years. And uh, we've gone through Ephesians and uh, Galatians, and now we're going through Philippians. And so this is kind of our third week coming into this. And uh, would have been our fourth week without some chaos recently, and it's good to be meeting with you guys, it's good to, good to see you, and good to be diving into God's Word again, and uh, we were, I've been, I've been kind of taking these passages as we go through, I'm planning to do this through the, through the whole book, but uh, as we take a passage, I want to pick out uh, my favorite word, I guess might be the way to put it, my favorite word out of the passage, or the, the word that I think maybe uh, the meaning hinges most on or carries the most weight in what Paul is trying to communicate. And it's just kind of a fun exercise. I do this with the, uh, with the youth a lot, which, by the way, we had a great uh, launch back into youth ministry for the year, back to school Olympics. Congratulations to the Lost Empire for taking home the gold and a whole bunch of these. So, two enthusiastic thumbs up, which I think they actually got like 15 enthusiastic thumbs up, but... 
Yeah, it was actually kind of a clean sweep. It was so close, and yet not close at all, I'm afraid. So, okay, just, uh, I had a feeling it might happen. Just to give you a little backstory. We decided our teams, our countries and nations, we decided by rock, paper, scissors, and all the losers were on one team, the Lost Empire, and all the winners were on the winning team, the Winnebago. So we had Mini Winnie versus the Lost Empire, and apparently the Lost Empire had something to prove. So, yeah, they, they took the, all, the, all the golds, and uh, so great to be back in, in youth ministry. We got a uh, uh, youth conference coming up that we'll be talking about sometime soon here, as well as ladies' uh, conference that is this next month, and uh, some exciting stuff coming in. But we are in Philippians chapter 1. Um, just to take you back, the last word that we looked at was the word because. And it was in verses uh, 12 through 14 of Paul's letter to the Philippians chapter 1. It says, uh, just to remind us all and get us all on the, uh, on the same page, and I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Christ. And because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. That word because, driving factor in Paul's life. Before we get too much further, I just wanted to double check. Uh, what camera number are we on? Is it looking okay? Three? All right. Um, check out four or five and see if one of those might be better. Forgot to, forgot to check that out beforehand. So diving in, um, this because, this word because, uh, a because, right, a purpose, a because produced a moment, and then that moment produced another because. This is kind of how life works. You look at Paul, because of Christ, he's now in chains, and because of that, now other people are knowing, that Christ, knowing about Christ because Paul is in chains because of Christ, all right? So there's this chain reaction that because produces more because, Right? All, all, our entire lives are built on purpose. And the reason why we do things affects the purpose that is going to flow out of our life. Right? We are in a moment, and we tend to think about our moment. But what is it that led into this moment? What is it that this moment is going to produce in the future? And it's all wrapped around this idea of because. It depends on because. And it's all that depends on because, and we're going to read through this next section and see what exactly depends on because, because there's this next domino that falls. Once you establish your because, then you can deal with what's next. So for those of you that, that watched the announcement video about uh, uh, last service, last week's service, uh, you've got a head start. So we're going to go ahead and read through. I'm going to read through this next section. We're actually looking at verses, I know the last one was only like uh, three verses, this, we're looking at verses 15 through 26, all right? So we're going to look through at the end of the chapter, and we'll just read through, uh, I don't think I have verse 26 on there, but uh, verse, uh, starting in verse 15, Philippians chapter 1, Paul writes, see if, you can, see if you can figure out what word we're going with. It's true that some are preaching out of jealous, jealousy and rivalry. Remember uh, what we had just read, that Paul says that because he's in, print, in, in chains in prison, because of Christ, others are now preaching the gospel, okay? And he says it's true that some are preaching out of jealousy and rivalry, but others preach about Christ with pure motives. They preach because they love me, for they know I have been appointed to defend the good news. Those others do not have pure motives as they preach about Christ. They preach with selfish ambition, not sincerely, intending to make my chains more painful to me, have you ever had that happen? You ever had somebody else's life, it just, you're convinced they are living it to make your situation more painful? Just me? Okay. Verse 18. But that doesn't matter. Whether their motives are false or genuine, the message about Christ is being preached either way. So I rejoice. And I will continue to rejoice, for I know that as you pray for me, and the Spirit of Jesus Christ helps me, this will lead to my deliverance. Verse 20, for I fully expect and hope that I will never be ashamed, but that I will continue to be bold for Christ as I have been in the past. 
And I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ whether I live or die. For to me, living means living for Christ. And dying is even better. But if I live, I can do more fruitful work for Christ, so I really don't know which is better. I'm torn between two desires. I long to go and be with Christ, which would be far better for me. But for your sakes, it's better that I continue to live. Knowing this, I am convinced that I will remain alive so I can continue to help all of you grow and experience the joy of your faith. And he guesses on what our word is, looking through that passage. It's in there twice, so it's not the. Anybody watch the video last week? There was a hint in there. Going in three, two, come on, Lost Empire, where are you? A word that I think so much of this hinges on and that I want to take a look at this morning. The word is weather. Anybody think that might have been it? Like to, like to claim late credit? Oh, I, I knew that one. I was just gripped by the fear of man. Weather. Let's look at this. Verse 18 says, but that doesn't matter whether their motives are false or genuine. The message about Christ is being preached either way, so I rejoice. Down in verse uh, 20, for I fully expect and hope that I will never be ashamed, but that I will continue to be bold for Christ as I have been in the past. And I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ whether I live or die. Whether I live or die. How many of you guys know that is a pretty full spectrum of possibilities? As I was preparing for this two weeks ago, because it was supposed to be last week's message, going through this, I was like, I really don't want to live out the application of this message in too extreme a fashion, because the possibilities are whether I live or die. I don't want to be a sermon illustration. Not on that spectrum. You know, I'll take a little minor, but it ended up being whether we have church in person or not. That's, that's a much more bite-sized version of weather. But we live through weathers. Weather is constantly changing, isn't it? Because the state fair is going on now. That's, that's why the weather is constantly changing, right? We, we're familiar with weather, like outside weather. Weather is constantly changing. You never don't have weather, Right? constant and your weather really affects your life weather determines so much of our lives doesn't it whether you live in a tropical climate or a desert or the arctic the same rules do not apply you know i, I was actually funny i remember i was uh back when i was uh doing music lessons and you know they've they've got this general rented building and all these little music studios that you give lessons in and you get like a kind of a contract worker and I remember one day, I was just like, man, it's freezing in here. It's the middle of summer. And I go, and in our Alaskan thinking, somebody was trying to save money by turning the AC down to 68. Backwards thinking, <laughs> right? That's how we save heat money, not AC money. AC money, we turn it up, right? Right? 78 might save a little more money than 60. And we're in there just freezing. It's like, I'll, I'll turn it down so it doesn't turn on. It's on AC. Let's just flip that over there. Weather determines how you think through things. It determines how you dress. I mean, you can, you can decide to dress however you want to. If you're in the Arctic or you're in the tropics. It just won't last long. Right? You can start, but your weather determines so much about your life. And uh, it's, it's constantly changing, some places more than others, right? We, we go from, you know, 70, 80 degrees down to, we get down 20, below. You know, we're, we're dropping down, and we've got a bit of a, of a span where you change, you have to change with the season. Some places, you go to Hawaii, and, you know, you're just dealing with the amount of moisture you're dealing with. You know, there's not a massive temperature 
swing. You're, you know, different places have different rules with the weather, and you go through different things, and your life bends and moves with the climate, with the weather that you're in. But uh, you know what doesn't define our lives? Not nearly as much as weather. What doesn't define our lives is weather. Got to change the spelling a little bit. W-E-A-T-H-E-R does define much of our lives, right? How many of you guys are, are getting kids ready for school, trying to figure out what to, what to pack clothes-wise, and got these little, like, Michelin men walking into the school buildings, and all throughout the summer, you're trying to figure out, is it, you know, especially this season, it's like, is it going to be Palmer blowing wind and freezing cold, or, or is it going to be, you know, the sun's going to pop out, and it's going to be 60, feeling like 90, you know? And you're trying to, so the kids... They just go in like herds, camels, and backpacks, and, and they carry everything. They got boots, two different kinds of boots, and you're just, you, know, <laughs> you got gym shoes and regular shoes and slip-ons and whatever doesn't make their feet stink. And so you've got, weather is determining so much of our life, but W-H-E-T-H-E-R, weather does not have to determine our life. A lot of the weather that happens that we are considering, whether this happens or that happens, whether he or she or they or whether it or whether I, so much of that on the outside does not determine our life. Weather describes everything. It does not define everything. Weather is very, very important. Whether I do this or that is a decision. But the weather, the decision, is a possibility. It's an opportunity. There's something that is there. Whether something comes at me or whether something else comes at me or whether nothing comes at me is a whole other thing. There's a lot of weather that's not in our control. Isn't that true? There's a lot of weather that is whether they do whatever, whether he or she does whatever, whether he does something right? Whether God is the creator of the universe, is the God of all eternity, whether he moves, whether he directs me, whether he allows something or brings something, whether there's something natural or something supernatural, so much of it is beyond our control, and yet it does not define our lives. It describes a lot of our life, but it does not define our lives. Look at, I want to take you uh, another one of Paul's letters, uh, his letter to Rome, the church in Rome. In Romans chapter 8, these are some great weather scriptures. Just listen to this for a second. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, very familiar uh, to many of us. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Weather or weather both fall into everything. Weather is just discounted in Paul's statement that everything works together. Jump a few verses ahead, verse 35. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity? What's that? Whether trouble or calamity, right? Whether we are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death. As the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Verse 38, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now just take personal stock for a moment of all the weather in your life. All the different weathers, whether this happens or that happens, whether this this plays out, whether this plan happens, whether everything changes or everything stays the same. Because we're both, we're on both sides of that, right? I wish everything would change, or I wish nothing would change. And guess what's going to happen? It's going to change, or it's not going to change, whatever. It's, it's constantly changing. And sometimes we have, we have seasons where it, 
plays out exactly like we thought and exactly like we hope. And sometimes when it's just turned on its head. But the thing is, is, get this, God's purpose is never called on account of weather. Okay, we have a lot of things that are called on account of weather. Right? Inclement weather, bad weather, weather we can't do anything. So much, I, I've been realizing more and more how much of my life is determined by Palmer wind. <laughs> how many plans that we have with the girls that I really don't want them to blow away, so we'll just stay inside today, you know? Or that will end up in Wasilla if we take it outside. So um, we're just going to, you know, you, you adjust. You adjust to the weather, right? God's purpose is never called on account of weather. Your weather, their weather, whether this happens or that happens, guess what? That does not change God's purpose. The only weather, uh, well, We'll talk about that in just, just a second. The, the, all these, these weather situations, they don't, they don't affect God's purpose. Um, and what really hit home, this, this word weather, uh, we just, personally, I know from my perspective and from what I'm seeing in a lot of lives, there is more weather than we have dealt with, uh, I think, maybe ever. I know for, for me personally, I've, there's more, I, I've dealt with some big weather like major decisions where it's like whether we do this or this, you know, whether we pursue being lead pastors or not. How many of you guys know that's kind of a big one, right? Whether we have kids or not, whether we get married or not, you know, whether I go and have that conversation with her dad or not. That was a big day. It was a Tuesday. Yeah. And it wasn't your normal day, you know? It was, I was the intern and he was the senior pastor. That'll add layers. Yeah. Well, we're dealing with more weather now, more different things going on than, and I think, I think a, a lot of us are. Um, you know, I know for us, uh, you know, we've got, you know, having three kids in grade school, now we're going back to school for the first time in a, in a year and a half, you know? And so, like, can we just agree the virus is kind of a, kind of a big weather, a, a, a weather system that's kind of moving through our, our whole world? And so it kind of complicates everything. Like, do the kids go back to school or not? Do we, do we continue at-home learning? And, and we've got now girls in two different, uh, the two different grade schools and and trying to figure out, uh, Lindsay's in school, I'm in school, the girls are in school. We've all got different studies trying to figure out classes and, and uh, different things going on. Um, we've got, uh, with, with what Lindsay, Lindsay's studying, I mean, uh, looking at, at possible uh, getting involved with a part-time job or something here in Palmer and trying to weigh out, do we do this, do we do this, do we do an internship that goes with our studies, do we, do we commute to Anchorage or try and find something local? Um, do I, in all our ministry stuff, which ministry opportunities do I say yes to and say, say no to? Do we, um, you know, we're, we're in the middle, of, we've got an opportunity, this crazy opportunity, especially in this, in this house climate, we're, we're in, the, in the middle of uh, working through purchasing a fixer-upper. Not just, oh yeah, let's add one on because this is what we do. Our first house purchase, period. Let's make it a fixer-upper and go through that whole loan process. And so we're, we're trying to figure out, you know, do we? Do we not? Do we pursue? Do we not? Is this a wise decision? Is it not? Do we, do we continue over here? Do we take advantage of this ministry opportunity? Do we, do we do this with our family? We've got so many things going on potentially just within our church. There's so much weather. Whether this happens or this happens, you can get lost in the decision-making and feel so incredibly vulnerable that somehow we might mess God up. Somehow somebody else is going to mess up God's plan for my life. Somehow somebody, somebody else, the they or the them, is going to come against, I mean, there, there's probably the, just everything around the, uh, well, I mean, just look at the news. I mean, just recently, one of, the, one of the biggest things that kind of developed between not having service last week and now 
You know, when you look at Afghanistan, you look at Haiti, and you look at some of these major situations that are going on, and you look at the weathers that are involved, you know, whether I wear this outfit or this outfit to my freshman, my first freshman day, right? It's whether they find me as a Christian or not. Whether they identify the house church system, whether they, they find my family, whether, whether we get out of this country alive or not. There's, there's some intense weather in our lives. And guess what? All of it matters. All of it matters, and none of it has to be in control. None of it can knock God's purpose off-center. Except maybe one. The core question, which we were actually talking about at Men's Breakfast, whether I follow Jesus, whether I surrender to him, there is a central weather at the core of every storm. And if we can settle that weather, all other weather will line up with God's purpose, will accomplish kingdom purposes. I want to just, I want to remind you of just a, a couple of stories. I want to go, I want to go back in time, right? Not to the 80s. I mean, I like want to go way back, like 3,500 years, okay? Let's go way back to where weather and weather kind of worked together, all right? Let's, let's go way back. Let's go back to like a Babylonian village fortress, and, uh, and we've got uh, maybe our little, uh, our little Babylonian warrior friend, maybe we call him Kinos, Kelsoff, Brad. I don't know, you can, you can pick the name. So we've got our Babylonian warrior guy, and he has volunteered to do guard duty. And he says, okay, I'll take it till the night shift, you go home, I know your wife's about to have a baby, go ahead, go, I'll, I'll cover the afternoon, okay? And he sets up guard duty. And uh, it's not like he can pull out his iPhone and check the time. You know, he's watching the sun. And just this, this shift is like taking forever. I mean, forever and ever and ever. And I mean, the sundial's not moving. It's taking, and what he doesn't realize is a couple mountain peaks over, the Canaanites and the Israelites are going at it. They've got this massive battle, and some guy named Joshua has prayed and asked God to make the sun stand still. And the sun and the moon and everything freezes while Brad is stuck on the wall. And God's doing this massive victory over here where he changes the weather and produces his weather, whether the Israelites win or not, whether they clean out the Canaanites or not, whether, whether the fight continues, which means they also have a weather, whether they're going to continue fighting while the sun is frozen. So there's all this weather that is culminating into God's purpose. Sometimes God uses real weather to accomplish our weather, other weathers. Let's fast forward a little bit, uh, maybe 1,500 years. Jump forward. And there is a storm, and it's out on a lake, and the disciples are now where, who we're hanging out with. And they're, they've taken off uh, under directions from Jesus, right? The Son of God has spoken, and they are now w rowing in obedience, sailing in obedience. And Jesus is actually with them, asleep in the bottom of the boat, when this massive storm, this weather system, comes up. And the weather that they're dealing with is whether we are going to live or die, right? And we like this story because what happens is as they wake Jesus up and they are panicking, what does Jesus do? He calms the storm. He stops the weather. But as I was, as I was reading through, as I was remembering that, and, and then we were talking about it a little bit at, at men's breakfast too, um, as I was thinking through this, through the, through the lens of this word weather, was God's purpose only in calming the storm? And if it was, why did Jesus turn to them and then say, 
Why are you so afraid? Where is your faith? And it seems to me that whether the miracle happens or whether they ride with Jesus through the storm, God's purpose can be achieved. And that it may have been a more spiritual moment for them to have rested confidently in the presence of Jesus through the storm than to panic, freak out, and watch him calm it. Whether. Whether Jesus calms a storm in our weakness and panic or whether we confidently ride through it. Whether. How many of us are going through one of those moments where we are praying for the miracle and hanging on during the journey? Faith on both sides. There's an opportunity for God's purpose to happen on both sides of weather. But it comes down to that simplicity of, of the statement of Jesus, follow me. The life of worship, right? When we treat God like he's really God. And all that that means. We follow him, we imitate him, we obey him, we draw near to him, we pursue him, we answer his call is the life of worship. It's the life of following. And that is the first weather. If we are unsettled and whether we follow Jesus or not, every other storm has free reign. Every other weather is an issue. Every other weather is a potential for loss. If we, are not, if we don't have the same because that Paul has, that, that anchor, right? And it's that whether I am committed to Jesus, whether I am in relationship with him, whether I follow Jesus, not whether I attend church, not whether I read my Bible, whether I follow Jesus. How real is that weather? And it's the question, it's that, it's that center. And once you deal with that, that first weather question, right? It's the real weather question. Then you can deal with whether they. What is Paul dealing with? He's stuck in prison. And he's dealing with whether they are actually intentionally preaching to hurt me. How messed up is that? Talk about taking something that you love and twisting it to hurt you. I mean, Paul is passionate about the gospel, passionate about telling people about Jesus, right? And now he has people actually doing that so that they can steal his converts, so they could build their group, so that they can rub it in that you, you, can't, you can't do what you're supposed to do, and we can. And whether you've got these people that are really, it's like there's this sinister slant to everything that they're, they're doing or you've got this other whole group of people that are saying paul we got your back we're going to keep the work going while you're in prison and you have this sincere group of people that are really whether whether it's sinister or sincere right we all have people like this around us we have situations that are like working against us it's not just that they're negative around us they are their eyes are on us they're looking at us, and they're saying, how can I tear them down? How can I take them out? This is, just, this is just normal life. There are both of those in play all the time. There's people that are for us, people that are against us. And Paul was in the middle of, of figuring this out, whether they right, are selfless or selfish, whether they are sincere or they are sinister helpful or hurtful and then you know you take it out another another layer you zoom out a little bit and it's whether he how many guys know god has his own agenda and he didn't check your calendar god is accomplishing something he is moving towards something and he's 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 working purpose in your life and in your situation, all of it. Whether he, and look at Paul, whether I live or die, whether God rewards me or reassigns me is one of the biggest questions, right? Because as a Christian, we are confident that when we die, we step into, we graduate. We head into the purpose of our creation. 
we head into something amazing. And there's a, there's a confidence that we can have as believers. And so as Paul says, for, for me to die is way better for me. I get to be with Jesus. But if we don't die and our situation changes, then we have been reassigned. Everybody think about that for a minute. And the situation that you have just stepped into, just stepped out of, have been in forever, you are on assignment. Your situation has just changed. You have just been reassigned. Let this sink in for a second. So many times we are thinking, as soon as I feel better, I'll I'll, I'll make kingdom impact. As soon as I finish these classes, I'll be equipped to make an impact for the kingdom. Right? As soon as I get rid of this sin, God can use me. As soon as I, I fix these relationships, as soon as I make things better and make amends over here, as soon as I get the right job or I have enough finances, as soon as, as soon as, as soon as. Where you're at right now in your present moment, in your present family, at your present economic status, in your present climate, at your age, you are on assignment. And with every assignment, there is an advantage. All right? Whether you're dealing with Paul the church planter or Paul the prisoner. Right? Whether you're dealing with, with uh, you know, Paul as, you know, one of, the, one of the church leaders or Paul the shipwrecked snake bite victim. You know, there's, there's, there's purpose throughout. Whether you're dealing with Jesus, the multiplier of loaves and fishes, or Jesus, the crucified criminal. There is purpose, and there is an advantage to your assignment. There are things that you can do while you are sick that you cannot do while you are well. There are things that you can do in Alaska that you cannot do in Oregon. There are things you can do in Arkansas that are legal for some reason. Sorry, my parents live in Arkansas. I got to pick on that every once in a while. They're, they're literally, whatever you're at, there are things you can do in college that you cannot do outside of college. There are things you can do while you are married, while you are single, while you have kids, while the kids have left the nest that you cannot do otherwise. There is an advantage to your assignment. So wherever you're at, whatever's going on, whether it's because something you've chosen, something they've chosen, something he's chosen, there is an advantage to your assignment, and God's purpose is never called on account of weather. So whether you get this job or this job, whether you get a job or you stay home, whether you get into this school or this school, whether you go to school or work a job, whether your friend stays your friend when you move into junior high or not, whether or whether God's purpose is still at play in our life. If we have settled this one question of whether I follow him, whether I surrender to him, And that's what Paul has settled. And so as he comes into this moment, whether they are trying to hurt me or not, whether they're trying to hurt me or help me, whether I live or die, I am confident that my life is going to bring honor to Christ. Our lives are full of weather. Just take a second and just think through all of the different weathers in your your life. Right now, just even today, whether you go out to eat or go home to eat, right? Whether you address what happened right before church or not, whether we put that off, whether, whether we uh, go and find the kid's other shoe that somehow magically disappeared in kid's church or not, you know, whether all the, all the different weathers, whether we are planning a vacation here or there or not, there's purpose, there's opportunity and God wants to use it all. He wants to be at the center of it all. (laughs) 
moves into not just our personal decisions, but, you know, when we're dealing with global situations and when we're d constantly, anytime we talk about missions, we talk about what's going on in the world, we talk about, uh, you know, our missionaries, or we, we talk about revival, or we talk about God's, God's move, character of a nation, um, the question of whether we pray, the question of whether we give, the question of whether we respond to whatever it is God is asking us to do personally. All this weather is opportunities. And the more what seems like crazy God plan stopping weather, that's, that's sometimes his favorite. That's sometimes the weather that he accomplishes the most in. And I think that's why Paul, in another letter he wrote to uh, the Colossian church, uh, Colossians 4, uh, starting in verse 2, it says, uh, Devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. Pray for us, too, that God will give us many opportunities. Everybody say opportunities. Opportunities to speak about his mysterious plan concerning Christ. That is why I am here in chains. Now look, look at his prayer request. Pray that I will proclaim this message as clearly as I should. Don't pray that my season changes. Pray that I am effective in my current season. Pray that I fulfill my assignment. If I get reassigned, that's great. In fact, he's convinced that he's going to be reassigned, that he's going to stay alive, because that would be better for the church, because God's, still, God's not done with him yet. God still has something that he wants to work through him to accomplish kingdom purposes, which we're going to be talking about next week. But God has a purpose in his assignment. And Paul, in the advantage, wants to take advantage of his assignment, of his place. In fact, that's why he's in prison, is because it's the only way he can get to the ruler of the known world. It's going to get to him through chains. Give us many opportunities to speak about this mysterious plan concerning Christ. That is why I am here in chains. Pray that I will proclaim this message as clearly as I should. Verse 5. Live wisely among those who are not believers. And make the most of every opportunity. Everybody say opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. How many know the picture he's painting is inclement weather? In fact, you look through Paul's life and you see a weather pattern, right? And every, every weather, he's still pursuing God's plans regardless of what comes and God accomplishes his plan through him regardless of the situation. All of those weathers, that we concern ourselves with so much. And yet God works through it all. You know, I think one, one of my favorite parts in here, let me, let me go back, and it's in um, verse 23. You know, as, as Paul uh, of Philippians chapter 1, verse 23, as, as Paul is thinking through whether I live or die, and he says... I am torn between two desires. How many of us are so in tune with what God wants to accomplish through us that we see, both, we see our desire in both options? Whether I am healed or not, where is the desire in both of these? The desire, not that I be sick at all, not that I experience bankruptcy, not that I don't get the job I want, not that whatever, you fill in, fill in the blank with whatever's the thing that we're trying to, we, we don't want to go through in this life, and yet God might be working through. And we look and we see the desire for God's will to be accomplished, the desire that either I am with Christ or others are with Christ through me. So once again, think through the weathers in your life. Just, just for a second, try to go to the extreme, okay? Whether I, or whether I, whether they, whatever they's are in your life that are working against you, whether God, 
How many of you guys know entire lives change when God moves? And it can be good, and it can be tragic. And when God, whether he's moving as the miracle worker or God as creator, because we live in this crazy limbo of the existence of the miracle working, loving God and sinful man, broken, fallen world, the natural and the supernatural. And as we go through that brokenness, it's inescapable in this life. Right? We all have a limited amount of time on this planet. We all go through hurt and pain from other people, from situations, whatever's going on, there's there's a lot of possibilities of what could happen. But what is God working through it what is the desire that we can see inside of it whether this happens or this happens what might god work through it is this easy it goes like against every human fiber of our being right we want we want to assess our life as our life our time on this planet and it's there's, you know, how good is it? What is it? I, we're, we're saving. Anybody else saving up money? Trying to? What if? What if our economy collapses? Ooh. What if our identity is stolen and we're robbed? What if the chaos chaos in Afghanistan doesn't stop in Afghanistan? What if everything as we know it changes? Does that stop God's purpose? It doesn't. Whether or whether there is a desire in the midst of it that we can hang on to that we can hold on to, that we can say, God, I I don't know how we're going to make it through this by his grace. I don't know how we're going to do it. Uh, I don't see it. I don't understand it. I don't know if I'm going to make it out of this situation alive. That's where Paul was at, right? I don't know if I'm going to make it out of this sickness alive. I don't know if I'm going to make it out of this this relationship alive. I don't know if I'm going to make it out of this year alive i I, you know whatever's going on but i know that you're gonna work through it i know that god's in control i choose to follow you whether you lead me here or whether you lead me here and it's that first storm we've got to calm that first desire of whether we follow him i invite you to stand You guys know, Paul dealt dealt with a lot of weather, didn't he? I want to take a few moments and uh, give us a chance to respond personally. Give us a chance to engage corporately. And I know there's, uh, I know in my life, there's a lot of decisions that need to be made. There's a lot of things that come at me that I, I send out. I cause my own problems most of the time. Anybody else? And there's a lot of decisions, a lot of weather, a lot of unknowns, a lot of things happening to us, as well as the potential for a lot of change for us to engage in and to cause and so I, I, we need to settle this first question of follow Jesus whether I follow him or not whether he is my anchor whether he defines everything or whether outside forces get to dictate everything about my life and life is good if the right weather happens and they agree with me God is uh, 
you know, life is good if God comes in alignment finally with my plan, as I've been suggesting that he do. You know? That first place of surrender. And there's a lot of real situations where it seems like the weather, we're like the disciples in the boat, and it seems like the weather could take us out. The wrong decision could take us out. The decision that's already been made could take us out. Can I tell you, that is a lie. No situation can take you out of God's purpose. Only the decision whether we follow him or not can. So let's lock into his purpose. Just take a moment. Think through the decisions. Think through the season of life that you are in, the weather that you are currently experiencing. And we're going to take it to Jesus. Jesus, we choose to follow you. We recognize you as God. Not just a name that we call out when we need help, but as our creator, our king, and our father. And Jesus, just afresh and anew right here, right now, with wherever we're going through, whatever, we just lay all of life aside for a moment and say we choose you. We respond to your invitation with yes. God, we need you to be at the core and the center of all we do and all we are. So that when we engage decisions, when we engage opportunities, when we deal with things coming at us, we are anchored in you. Jesus, we choose to follow you. And we invite you into the rest of our existence, in our immediate circle of family and friends, God, into, into our city and into our state, God, into this world where we are called to have impact. Jesus, we choose to follow you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we just keep our eyes on Jesus. And we just move towards him, recognizing that he is at the center of everything. And no matter the craziness that we go through, we have our anchor in him and his faithfulness. Um, we want to uh, invite the, the Gurkhers, Pastor Mike and Dieta, come forward. They're going to be up here available to, to pray with anybody that would like prayer. Uh, just join, join with you in your situation and, and just pray over whatever it is you're going through and just pray God's purpose right into the middle of it. I pray for direction where it's needed, provision where it's needed, peace, clarity. And then we're just gonna we're just getting our eyes on Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. We need you, God. God, I thank you that nothing can stop your purpose. Even in the worst, worst of situations, God, we can hold on to, to a desire for you to do what only you can do. That you use it all, God. Jesus, we need you to move. God, we need you to move in our lives, but God, we need you to move in this world. And Jesus, we lift up all, all those going through all that chaos across the world, whether it's natural disasters, Haiti, God, or persecution, political, and religious unrest, God, in Afghanistan, and the believers and our troops, Jesus. 
God, we ask you to intervene. God, to protect. God, give wisdom to the leadership that's involved in making all the decisions. God, protection for your people. God, in the midst of it all, I pray that your purpose would be accomplished. I know as things intensify, people are running to you. Jesus, I pray eternity would shift as things in the natural go sideways. People would experience your love, God, and your peace, your saving power. God, and as we sit so many miles away, God, in our comfortable church, move on our hearts, God. Challenge us with the question of, do we follow you? Are you working your purpose in every situation? Jesus, Jesus, we need you, God. You just lay it all at his feet, recognizing his faithfulness. Jesus, Jesus. Walking around. Thought by now they fall, but you have never failed me yet. Waiting for change to come, knowing the mantle's won. Oh, you have never failed me. still stands the promise still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never failed me yet
laid all his feet. He's never failed. We trust him. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. you're faithful from generation to generation we put our faith in you Jesus we choose to follow you God we need your courage we need your Holy Spirit your empowerment, God, to follow you, to see your purpose come to fruition through our life. So Jesus, we surrender every circumstance, everything that we're going through, everything that we're planning. And God, we give it to you. I pray that your perfect will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, use us work through our families, work through our situation, God, work through our success and our failure. God, I thank you for the confidence that we have in you. Your faithfulness is true. So Jesus, we walk with joy and confidence knowing that you are faithful and you are good through the midst of every circumstance. So we choose you, Jesus. We choose to follow you, God. Enable us to walk out of this place following you, to walk in your spirit, to walk in your power, in your confidence, God, in your authority, to walk in your love. God, I pray that your purpose would come to pass through our lives. Thank you, Jesus, that we can know that. That it's not in our power, it's not based on us, but on you. So Jesus, as we leave this place, we pray, God, go before us, go behind us. May we never leave your presence. Whether we choose A, B, or C, accomplish your purpose, Jesus. Work through us. 
draw all men to yourself. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you now, God, as we leave this place. And our words, our deeds, our attitudes. We follow you, Jesus. By your grace, in your powerful name, the name of Jesus, everyone said. you are dismissed. We've got ladies um, Bible study and youth group on Wednesday night. If you're giving this morning, you can do so online or in the basket at the back. Blessings.